Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. We're here at the Heart Valve Summit in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm here with Dr. Richard Bay, who leads the Interventional Echo Lab at Minneapolis Heart Institute in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Dr. Bay, thanks for Great. being with us. Thanks for having me, Adam. So, we've been answering your questions on uh, Facebook that our community posted, but I have a question for you, Dr. Bay, because I understand you're doing some very new cutting edge um, implantations of transcatheter devices for mitral valve replacement. Right. Can you share a little bit about what is happening? Because I had heard this technology wasn't going to be ready for years and years. Right, so we've been working with a company called Tendine, and they've developed a percutaneous mitral valve replacement strategy, which goes in through a small incision in the uh, left ventricular apex. So it's a small incision on the side of the chest, uh, and then the catheter is delivered through a um, small hole in the tip of the heart and uh, delivered under ultrasound guidance, which I'm helping with, uh, and then is attached to the outside of the heart by a little tether. And um, it's a very slick procedure. We are in the feasibility uh, part of the study. Uh, initially, it was approved by the FDA for 10 patients. Now, I think it's been expanded to 20 patients. We've done all seven patients in the United States up to this point. Um, it's uh, started in April, so we just did our seventh patient earlier this week. Uh, obviously, it's very early on in the experience, but it's been moving quickly. Uh, and so far, all the patients have done well. Uh, they're typically uh, extubated in the operating room, uh, and they have, we've had no strokes, no deaths so far. So it looks like a promising technology, a less invasive approach. Uh, for patients that aren't good surgical candidates, but obviously it's early on, uh, more to come, but uh, so far it looks promising. Great, well, D uh, Dr. Bay, thanks for all the work you're doing. I do have one uh -huh. follow-up question for you. You mentioned the candidates, the patients yes. who this technology is potentially suited for. Can you describe about who it might be for and who it is not for? So at this point, we're looking at patients who have leaky mitral valves, severe leakiness, uh, who are symptomatic and who would normally meet criteria to have their mitral valve operated on. But for uh, other reasons, uh, other health problems, they are not felt to be surgical candidates. Uh, and so this is an option for them to get therapy um, without the high risk of the open heart surgery uh, if they're two high risk uh, patients. So uh, it can be due at this point, as it's a feasibility study, it can be due to leakiness because of a problem with the valve or a problem from a previous heart attack, uh, anything that's causing uh, severe leakiness of the valve, um, and in patients that are not considered surgical candidates. Um, there are some technical factors they have to look at with a CAT scan of the heart before the procedure to make sure that the heart is big enough. Uh, that it, the valve isn't going to cause uh, problems inside the ventricle, uh, cause uh, problems with the other valves, that sort of thing. Um, but that's, those are the patients that we're looking at at this point. Great. Well, Dr. Bay, thank you so much for all the great work you're doing this feasibility study. We really appreciate it. Congratulations yeah. on your success. Thank you. And thanks for uh, coming by and meeting with us. Thanks for having me.